أمرين ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأخذت من لساني يفتر قولي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So, Assalamu alaikum everyone once again. My name is Shaisa Dramsi Bimji. I'm a certified health coach. I have trained over 200 individuals for the past two years. And I have been um, working with uh, different clients from different companies. And uh, I focus mainly about marrying the, com the combination of body, mind, and soul. It is extremely important for us in order for us to heal our bodies to make sure that the body, mind, and soul are all connected. And we have this strong connection in order to heal from within. Um, that being said, I know uh, Ramadan is a right around the corner. So inshallah, this benefits you all about you know, focusing on the purpose, understanding how to nourish your body, and then of course, training your body as well. Of course, um, at the end, inshallah, we'll be able to ask any questions. So feel free to save your questions for the end. And if you have um, any other questions after the session, I will be sharing my details as well. So first and foremost, um, our today's topic is through healing our health through the body, mind, and soul. And to begin with that, I always like to strongly enforce the concept of focusing on the mind. Now, um, setting the right intention is absolutely important for us to heal. And if our mind is not in connection with our gut, there is always that um, disconnect and also the healing process is a lot slower. So therefore, focusing on the mindset and your intention is one of the most important things that we need to try to do before we do anything. And with the holy month of Ramadan, inshallah, this would be a great start for all of us to start to create that intention and that purpose in our mind so that we are fully engaged in the holy month of Ramadan for both our soul, our body, and our spirit as well. Go ahead and begin. So our purpose, what is our purpose? What does this all mean? How does this connect with our body, mind, and soul? So again, um, very important for us to understand why fasting, especially during the holy month of Ramadan is prescribed to us. We have to understand that in part of the Holy Quran, it has stated that, um, oh, you who believe decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you so that you may become righteous. What does this mean? We have to understand this in order for us to heal our body. So when we think about the right, the concept of righteousness, it also means the idea of truly trying to heal from within, making sure that we understand that we are fully using our body to the best capacity, justifying and dealing with our body with full trust, because at the end of the day, our body does not belong to us. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore it is so important to understand that we need to understand the rights of our body. And this is what fasting does to us. It creates this mindfulness. It gain, gives us this um, perspective for us to truly understand where do we go from here? It is it just, just about you know fasting and abstaining from food or drink or is there more to it? And as we know, and as we have heard in lectures and majlises and you know Quran of seer classes, I'm sure, um, understanding that the mind is uh, truly important in this process of knowing and realizing the importance of the human body and more importantly, the right of the human body. So where do we begin from here? I'd like to start off with mindfulness. So of course, it is absolutely important to think about our spirituality. This is all very much connected. How do we do this in the holy month of Ramadan? We want to truly want to focus on strengthening our soul, understanding that our soul is what is going to elevate us to higher realms, and also truly important to heal our soul during this holy month. This is all connected to healing our gut health. This is all connected to living a healthy lifestyle as well. So again, once it's very important to understand your soul, try to strengthen it. How do we do this during the holy month of Ramadan? Understanding and reciting the recitation of the Holy Quran is crucial. Our healing properties are all within the Holy Quran. So this is a great way to start. And this is why Ramadan is prescribed to us is because now this is a time for us to connect to our soul, connect to the Holy Book. Secondly, we really wanna focus on facing and understanding how to face hardship. 
Right now, as we all understand, during the pandemic, it has been extremely difficult for us. And sometimes we have had shortages at the grocery stores or at any of your local pharmacy, things like that. So it has been quite difficult. With Ramadan approaching, we understand that our hardship kind of leads towards food and water. So actually understanding how this is impacting our soul and maybe even impacting our minds as well. Maybe we have to also think about why is this so hard for me? Why do I have to eliminate um, this idea of being so connected to food constantly 24 seven? Why is this causing me so much hardship? What is going on? This is all a lot about self-development, about the mind, really focusing on why this is difficult or why it can be difficult. And then thirdly, um, and not the, definitely not one of the last things, of course, but elevating to the realms of angels. This is crucial because we need to make sure that we go towards the Ahlubayt as much as possible. Any questions? We're okay. Um, if anybody wants to ask any questions, you can, or you can write the questions in the chat as well. And um, Shaista will have a look at that as well. Absolutely. Then we look at our perspective. So first and foremost, it is truly important to understand the perspective and understanding what is going on during the holy month of Ramadan, where we have the spiritual component, the mental component, our mindset, why we do what we do, our emotional connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. And then of course our physical, which is our food and water. Excuse me, I think I need a glass of water here myself. Any questions about this in particular? Okay. So we really want to focus on investing in all the four dimensions, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the physical understanding the why, why do we do what we do? And then of course, setting our intentions for this. Now that we understand the purpose, I'd like to dive into what everyone is very interested to know about is how do we nourish our body now? Now that our mindset is there and we are truly focused on the holy month of Ramadan, what do we do next? We go towards nourishment. I strongly believe, and this is part of my practice, that anything that is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's health or illness, is truly something that we can benefit from the world, what is nature, what is natural to us versus pharmaceuticals and the, like Western medicine. Anything that Allah bestows upon us is something that we can fight with, we can deal with, we can heal with. So if you, God forbid, have a certain condition, a disease, an illness, everything is through the food that is upon us. Everything is through this earth. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes that eat what is lawful and good on the earth, because knowing that we have to understand that this is truly a healing property. And we need to learn to focus on this more importantly before we kind of reach out to medicines and things like that, that just mask the illness, that just mask the disease especially when it comes to gut health and when it comes to um, Ramadan, of course, we are looking into fried foods and different types of new, like delicious treats. We really wanna focus on things that are truly wholesome and healing at the same time. Let's go towards the ingredients. Feel free to screenshot this, save this if you'd like. This is quite detailed, but just wanted to um, give a perspective of exactly what you need to have in your kitchen for the holy month of Ramadan that will not only benefit you during the holy month, keep you full for a longer period of time, avoid any headaches, pains, anything of that nature, especially if you are diabetic, this is a great list. Um, but also after Ramadan, this is a great, like, um, I would say the best ingredients you can have in your kitchen or even in your pantry. So here we talk a little bit about salt. Of course, we know that the Prophet subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that salt heals about 70 diseases in our body. We have to understand there's different variations of salt out there. Of course, the best one is usually pink Himalayan sea salt. This pink Himalayan salt actually helps heal and it has tons of minerals. A pinch of Himalayan salt with a little bit of water 
um, and drinking that in the day actually balances our natural electrolytes. So you don't need to go towards um, vitamin waters and Gatorade and these types of drinks that you see at your local grocery store. The ingredients are from our own kitchen. So again, pink Himalayan salt, some lemon and a little bit of warm water can heal our body so much. And it's a great way to break our fast. So after you have your salt or your your date, it would be highly recommended to focus on having some warm water, salt and lemon first thing in the morning or first thing at iftar time. We then go into omega-3s. Now omega-3s are healthy fats, huge component um, for our bodies, for our muscles to heal. It's also extremely important to have because this is great for heart health. Um, so if you're someone that has um, uh, any heart conditions or diseases, this is extremely important. And overall, uh, for women um, in general, omega-3s and healthy fats are extremely important to balance your hormones. So what are we looking at when we talk about healthy fats? We're talking about hummus, olives, avocados, walnuts, seeds, anything like nuts and seeds are absolutely phenomenal. So many healing properties in them. And you know, one of the greatest seeds that we all have heard about from the prophet is black seed. And black seed is known to cure every illness except death. So it's one of the best things to have first thing in the morning or when you're at for suhoor or daku, you can have some black seed with some water or you can add it to your, uh, your dishes. Don't be afraid to kind of mix around with them. A lot of them are neutral in taste. So when you throw them in your curries or in your chicken marinade or anything of that nature, you'll notice that the taste is not there, but at least you're getting the benefit of these types of seeds. So would highly recommend trying to add them into your diet. You could also throw in some seeds and nuts into your salads, um, into your smoothies or any other dish that you like. So in specific about omega-3s, cumin seed is very recommended. Also known as colongi, as some of us might know. Um, great to have and it helps with digestion. So if you feel that sometimes you will have um, digestive issues during the holy month, because of course we're eating a lot more during one seeding, um, cumin seeds or uh, black seed is really great to have um, with water to kind of help with digestion. It also does reduce blood pressure and also helps with weight loss if that is something that you are aiming for, but overall very good for your gut health. The last, the second thing, or the second last thing that I would like to discuss is about barley and oats. Whole grains are just as important as omega-3s because whole grains actually do help with heart health and very much about controlling your blood sugar and your blood pressure. So barley, you can add into things like sherbo, as some people know, great dish to have for suhoor. Um, you can even add oats to that or even just making your rotlis or anything with barley or oats is a great way to kind of add those um, ingredients into your diet. Again, these are great in fiber, which helps keep you full for a longer period of time. High in potassium, which is why it helps with blood pressure and extremely important for healthy kidney function. And then lastly, we like to focus on low glycemic foods. During the holy month of Ramadan, we usually have a ton of like oily dishes or very sugary dishes. Nothing wrong with that, but we do wanna make sure that we add some low glycemic foods into our diet. These are um, lower in sugar, great for people with diabetes or even blood pressure issues. Otherwise, just overall a lot more healthier for you. Apples, berries, grapefruit, those types of things. Non-starchy vegetables or green vegetables. Those are extremely healing in so many different ways um, and absolutely essential to have on your dinner table. So this is just um, some of the main things that I would highly recommend for a healthy kitchen. Now we talk about daily food routine. We really wanna focus on a couple of things. One is to start off your day or start off your meal with warm water, lemon, honey, and a pinch of salt. Add veggies to your plate. Understand your hunger cues. If you're hungry, eat your meal and wait about 15 minutes before you have another serving. Our bodies tend to take a little bit longer to let our brain know that it is full. Give your body the time to digest the meal. And of course, do not miss out on suhoor. This is one of the recommended things by the Holy Prophet and the progeny. And this is why, because it actually helps regulate your blood sugar. It actually helps regulate your blood pressure and also keeps you full for a longer period of time. 
which is why suhoor first thing in the morning is crucial to making sure that you are enjoying your fast, not just doing it because you have to. <clears throat> Any questions? The last thing I want to talk about is training. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, of course, when we are looking into how to um, heal our bodies, we really want to make sure that in order to heal our bodies, we focus on our mental, our gut, but our overall body as well. The Holy Prophet has said a stronger believer is better than a weak believer. So, while this might be in terms of our mind and our knowledge and also our soul, we have to also have to understand that strength and having a strong body is crucial, especially to live a long and healthy life. How do we do this? So first and foremost, strength training. Strength training is extremely great to have as part of your regular exercise routine. Uh, you want to strength train for about 10 to 15 minutes a day. I have here a resistant band Resistance band looks like this. And all you need to do is really stretch your body as much as you can throughout the day. And this really does help with your muscles. And it truly does help with healing as well. Um, strength training has also proved to lower your insulin levels as well. So if you are diabetic, this is one of the best things to do. And then we also like to talk about cardio as something that we all like to do is just walking, come, keeping it simple, but we wanna really keep it sustainable. The thing with exercise is that you really need to understand your body. No one else is going to tell you how your body really works. Some people might recommend you to do a 30 minute workout or one hour workout, but sometimes that's not sustainable. And this is what's the problem in today's society is that we are unable to lead these from within these expectations that are brought to us. We are always told 30 minutes of exercise, 150 minutes a week, we need to work out, we need to do some sort of activity. It's not feasible for some people. Some people have issues with their feet or legs or just overall anxiety or stress. So it's really important to add just 10 minutes a day at minimum, preferably after iftar so you can allow for digestion or before iftar would highly recommend going outside for a walk if you're able to bike ride using your treadmill or do a seven minute hit workout. Those are simple, easy, quick, and um, something that you can do on a regular basis. We all have 10 minutes in our day. It's extremely important to add some sort of routine into our daily lifestyle. So again, when we talk a little bit about understanding our body, mind, and soul, you always want to remind yourselves that you have to focus first on your mental health, really set the intention, nourish our body, and then train our full body so that we can be the best versions of ourselves and lead to the higher realms of the angels, be with the imam when the imam comes. This is just um, a quite a summary that I have tried to condense in for 30 minutes or so. Um, there was a lot of information, so I really appreciate if you guys would like to ask me some questions, but I hope this was helpful. And um, I will also share my um, information here. This is my information. You can contact me at any time. Um, I do have Facebook. I do health coaching as well for 20 minutes. If anyone is interested, interested for a consultation, my consultations are completely free. Um, Instagram as well. I share a lot of information there as well as on Facebook and of course LinkedIn as well. Feel free to contact me and that's my email address there. Um, but inshallah you have found this beneficial. Um, I hope I'm on time and inshallah if there's any questions uh, I don't mind taking some right now. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. I think it was a really good summary of putting everything in because sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming when you look at different things. So I think it was amazing. Um, definitely something that we needed with um, before the month of Ramadan as well. So thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, please do write in the chat or um, you can unmute yourself. 
Um, Shaista, you will share the slides with me, isn't it, um, when you get a chance? And I'll share it in Absolutely. the ICRA library. Uh, we do have an ICRA library WhatsApp group, and I can share the, um, the slides on there. I can share the recording as well. It might be something that you want to hear again. Um, just a quick question, Shaista. You know, a lot of people at the beginning of the fasting, um, they might get headaches um, or migraines and things like that. And obviously, you know, uh, with the migraines, when it's once it starts, it's no stopping without any medication. How do we try and avoid that? Because the day is quite long at the moment, isn't it, with the fasting? What do you suggest on there? Yeah, great question here. So whenever we have headaches, it's usually due to um, caffeine withdrawal. So if you're someone that loves to have a cup of coffee or tea in the morning, um, when you don't have that on a, if you don't have that starting Ramadan, then of course that's gonna lead to headaches. Um, and also it's usually due to dehydration as well. So it's extremely, extremely important to hydrate your body throughout the holy month of Ramadan. Very simple tip here is like when you break your fast, you have your glass of water, and then you begin with your meal. Don't have any water throughout the meal because this does actually um, clash with digestion in the body. So you want to have water after a meal. And then uh, you're looking to have at least uh, two glasses of water every hour and a half or so until you head to bed. Um, wake up for, in the morning for suhoor. This is important. Having some water in the morning. Again, you can even do the little bit of salt and um, lemon first thing in the morning along with some sort of meal. Um, that will also help with the headaches. Um, if you hydrate yourself more throughout the day, um, sorry, throughout the evening rather, you should not receive those headaches. Um, unless the migraines get really bad, uh, sometimes what is recommended is magnesium. So a magnesium supplement, if it's okay for you and your doctor is okay with it and clears that, you can definitely have a magnesium supplement or look into magnesium rich foods, which again is seeds, nuts, and even dark chocolate does help um, with headaches, surprisingly. So yes, you can definitely have some of that as well. And thank Hope you. that answers your question. Yeah, thank you so much. I think um, they do recommend soup. Um, is that like to just help with the hydration as well, drinking soup during iftar time as well? Absolutely, yes. Yes, definitely soup is a great way. And also if uh, you can't intake too much water and you feel like you might wake up too many times at night, um, even having um, water that, sorry, vegetables that have high water content. So cucumbers, watermelon, things like that, that are really great for us are a great source of um, water and getting hydrated. Excellent, thank you. We've got a question here. Somebody who's um, got a baby, um, obviously breastfeeding, what do you recommend in terms of fasting wise as well? How would they help? Obviously, because they will need to be hydrated as well, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So with breastfeeding, of course, um, you want to focus on the same types of things that I just mentioned today. Um, whole foods, whole grains is really important to keep you full for a longer period of time. Um, if you know something like sherbo or barley, barley soup, oat soup, those are really great. That will keep you um, really energetic throughout the night and also throughout the day as well. Um, I would also recommend having things like nuts and kajur with some tea. That's also really great to give you the energy and also help with producing breast milk during the holy month. So those are the two recommendations that I have. And uh, what do you recommend eating during Sehri? Because obviously you're half kind of sleepy and you're trying to gulp everything in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, for Sehri, um, I always recommend oats or whole grains. So um, something like sherbo, which is just literally like oat soup, um, is really great to have in the morning. Also eggs are a fantastic source of energy and protein that can keep you full for a longer period of time. So boil some eggs and keep them in the fridge and just to add some salt, pepper, any of your favorite toppings and have that in the, in the morning um, with some pita bread if you'd like, uh, or even a, a shake. Sometimes people like to have like a peanut butter oat shake or some sort of chocolate shake in the morning. Um, a great way to also get all the right nutrients in as well. Excellent. And I think a lot of um, people have started thinking about um, their diet, their nutrition, and how not to obviously get, gain weight. What do you advise? Is it just falling? Um, not to obviously <laughs> wait. What do you advise? On that? Right. So with the holy month of Ramadan, and we understand that there's always fried foods and sweets. You want to limit it as much as possible one fried food per meal. 
Um, you want to kind of stay away from um, anything that's overly oily. So if you need to fry something or you have more than one fried dish, I would recommend using like an air fryer or baking it. Um, and also just watch your sugar content because sometimes that can actually lead to weight gain, more sugar in our bodies with, uh, you know, things that we have, desserts, all those types of things. So try to limit that as much as possible. Um, if you're worried about just overall weight gain, um, that's something we can take offline. So feel free to contact me, but you also want to look into uh, things that help you digest your food. So ginger tea is really great to help with digestion. So if you feel like you've had a very heavy meal and you don't want that to sit with you for too long or affect you in any way, ginger tea is also great and also really helps with uh, weight loss as well. Excellent. Thank you. Um, just the last one, and then we'll pass on to the ladies to ask any questions. Um, did you say it's better to do the exercise before iftar or after iftar? Because obviously, um, what do you recommend? And what yes. kind of exercise would you recommend if it was after or before iftar? Does it vary? Sure, of course. Um, so it does vary in terms of your capabilities. However, an hour before iftar is a great way to get a workout in because then soon enough, you're going to be hydrating yourself and eating something. So I would recommend an hour before iftar or like maybe an hour after iftar where your food is digesting. So my recommendation, depending on what you can handle, what your body can do, uh, remember it varies from person to person. So if you're just starting out with a physical activity, try to get um, some walking in, just some overall movement. You can do a simple yoga flow. Uh, that's a great activity that you can do at home, 10 minutes. Um, there is a great person on YouTube called Yoga by Adrian. She's fantastic and she does great simple workouts. So I would recommend that. Um, otherwise, going for a walk in the evening after your iftar or also doing some sort of stretching, um, resistance training, like I mentioned, these bands are super easy. You can find them anywhere, even online. And just by stretching your body it actually does help as well. So this is also a form of exercise that I would recommend during the three months. Excellent. Thank you. Um, someone was just asked uh, about fibromyalgia. Do you recommend anything um, or do you want me to tell them to message you privately and you can give them some information about that? Yeah, absolutely. So just um, you definitely please contact me if you have more questions about fibromyalgia or arthritis or anything of that nature. Usually that means inflammation in the body. So again, it goes back to the very core ingredients that I have mentioned. Uh, might actually be helpful if I just share that again. Yeah. Um, right here, these are really important ingredients that will also help with fibromyalgia, especially the omega-3s that will really help. Um, think of omega-3s, the healthy fats, as like a covering on your muscles and on your bones. It really does help with uh, protecting your body. So if you're having this pain, um, inflammation in your body, omega-3s will help but also seeds, black seed oil is great. Black seed is really great to have as well. Um, but there's so much that I would need to know before giving the right recommendations. But overall, this is like the perfect um, healthy balance for any, any kind of illness, any kind of disease as well. And thank you. Can you share that slide with your details if anybody wants to take a um, screenshot Absolutely. as well? Absolutely, we'll definitely share this. Okay, um, has anybody got any questions to ask? You can unmute yourself. Hello, sister. Assalamu alaikum. So, um, I, um, I'm actually, um, I, I asked a question about the um, me actually driving uh, constantly, and especially during the month of Ramadan. Um, what would you recommend for um, hydration? Because obviously, it's going to be um, long drives for me, especially uh, due to commitment. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was trying to see what will be your recommendation. And also, um, I also seem like because of the drive, I'm constantly tired. And um, is it also because of my sugar levels? Um, that's something uh, kind of makes me um, um, tired or what, what are the sugar, I mean, uh, food recommendations you would have for that uh, yeah. to feel energetic? Absolutely, great question. Thanks so much for that. So again, uh, you want to look into low, low glycemic foods that are listed here. Um, when it comes to hydration, grapefruit is really great for that, as well as any other citrus fruits. You can even look for watermelon or cucumbers. Those are great snacks to have. Um, 
I would just recommend having those at iftar or at suhoor time to keep you hydrated. If it's a sugar issue, you want you might want to connect with me offline and we can talk more about it. But I would have to look at what your sugar levels are and kind of see what other recommendations. But usually whole grains is something you want to focus on when it comes to uh, diabetes or your blood sugar, as well as low glycemic food. So just search that even online, you will get a full list of recommended low glycemic foods that you want to add into your diet. Okay, thank you. And I think somebody's asked about diabetic patient if they can keep fast. That they would need to check with their doctors, isn't it? Depending Please. on how um, whether they're on insulin or what kind of requirements they need um, in terms of their medication, right? Absolutely. And usually, if you're diabetic and you're fasting, you might feel hungry faster. Um, you might feel that ache and pain in your body. So it's really important to have suhoor and having daku in the morning. Um, so again, the same ingredients that are listed here are crucial to have. Okay. Um, obviously, with um, fasting, sometimes it may, it's quite hard for us to kind of wake up in the morning, be a bit more, should we say, awake and alert. What do you suggest, especially for um, children who are going to school or, you know, youths and teenagers as well, how to keep the, um, be alert, including us who are working as well, how to be alert in the morning? Because usually without tea, we're a bit, um, we've not had our caffeine intake, isn't it? So what Absolutely. do you suggest? Yeah, definitely. So again, um, going back to nuts and seeds and even kajur, like dates are extremely, extremely helpful during this time. Um, I would create little baggies of some walnuts, almonds, cashews, and maybe a couple, like maybe one or two uh, dates with me. If you're not someone that likes to have suhoor in the morning, have that little bag next to you at your at your like table in your bedroom and um, have that in the morning right before fajr. And just having that with some glass of water and again, with a little bit of Himalayan salt and some lemon, that will really help keep you hydrated, avoid the headaches, and also keep you um, energetic the whole day. So um, you can even do that if you're not someone that likes to have like a full blown meal in the first thing in the morning. And would, would that kind of thing help with uh, mentally as well? Um, when you're fasting, a lot of us um, are a bit, you know, mentally not alert that way. So that would help as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. In fact, uh, the nuts will definitely help, especially walnuts and cashews are really great for uh, brain health. So again, anything omega-3s really do um, circulate, help with circulation in the brain, uh, blood flow as well. So this is why nuts and seeds and kajur or dates is like one of the best options. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Has anybody got any questions? We've still got a few minutes if anybody's got any questions to ask. I think everyone seems okay. I think you've covered it all. Um, are you able to put on the screen at the moment your, um, your contact details if anybody Absolutely. wants to make a note? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Here you go. Yeah, and I have a lot of tips on my YouTube page. I didn't mention that here, but if you search Shaisa Bimji on YouTube, you will find that I have created a seven day series on healthy tips for the holy month of Ramadan. Um, I go through those in detail for about seven minutes or so. So definitely check out those videos. Um, I will also be doing live sessions during the holy month of Ramadan on Instagram, on health and wellness, on uh, with different people that are going to be joining me during those lives. And we're gonna talk about um, healing our bodies more and more. So definitely tune in for that. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. They'll both be connected during that time. Brilliant, um, thank you so much. Um, we can't see the, the screenshot of your contact detail. Is it on the oh, screen? Oh, you can't see it just yet? Yeah. If you can share um, that. Yep. Can you see now? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So if anybody wants to make a note of the details, um, as I said, Shaista is um, ever so kind. You know what? She'll be able to help you wherever you need. And she's full of motivation. Sometimes we all need that, um, but she will help you wherever she can. So please um, make a note of her details and um, she will help us not just during the month of Ramadan, but just as ongoing, how to help yourself as well. As she mentioned, um, health is really important and it's all connected with the mind and the body and the soul as well. Um, so happy 
happy youth to be um so inshallah so thank you so much um everyone for your questions um feel free to uh, message me or shaista if you need anything um i'll put my details on the chat uh, we do have an ikra library whatsapp group where we share recordings of our sessions any any previous sessions as well um any updates as well so please um do message me and i, I can add you to the group as well thank you so much shaista that was so lovely uh, really informative as well. Thank you very much. Um, please, everyone, keep us in your duas. Um, our next session is, as I mentioned, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock in the morning, UK time, we will have a, a meditation session during the month of Ramadan with Sister Rawan. So please do join us um, and we'll keep you updated. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, let me know and I can share the recording and the slides with you. Thank you. Jazakallah. Khudafis, everyone. Thank you so much. Khudafis. Khudafis.